Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 67. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file or the PDF files, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video we want to talk about hypothesis testing about population difference when the standard deviations for the population are not known. Now in last video we did confidence intervals. This video we're going to do hypothesis testing. Now luckily, the same five steps for hypothesis testing that we used in chapter 9 can be used here. Our hypothesized difference, that is mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2, the two population means, the difference between those will be d sub 0. And we will assume that they are 0 in our examples. Our test statistics. Oh yeah, we're going to use t because we don't know the population standard deviation. And we'll calculate that by taking the point estimate for the population difference. That'll be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus our hypothesized difference of 0. That'll be the numerator. And we divide it by the standard error or the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 for the t distribution. Now, just as in last video, we take the square root of variance from the first divided by sample size of the first plus variance of the second divided by sample size of the second. And remember, we don't know standard deviation from the population, so we have to use s, which is sample standard deviation, and squared to get sample variance for both samples. Hey, and here's our degrees of freedom. We saw last video, yes, this looks big and scary, but when we break it apart in Excel, it's pretty straightforward. Not only that, but here's a big hint over here, and we'll see it. After we do our calculations manually, we can use the t-test to sample assuming unequal variance feature in our data analysis add-in. Now, if you go ahead in the PDFs, one, two, to page 18, 19, and 20. There's the written description of our problem we're going to look at, but we're going to jump over to Excel. Now, this is the same example we did last video with confidence intervals, but now we're going to do hypothesis testing. And here it is. A recent EPA study compared the highway fuel economy of domestic and imported compact cars. Samples are independent. That means we took two samples and they're not related in any way. Distributions for the sample are normal. We'll assume the miles per gallon are normally distributed. At the 5% significance level, can the EPA conclude that the miles per gallon is higher on the imported cars? Now we're going to take this statement right here. Remember, we first set up the alternative hypothesis, then the null hypothesis then pick our alpha. So if we're looking at this, can the EPA conclude that miles per gallon are higher on the imported cars? Well, look at this. We set this up as sample 2. So if we take the mean of this, we're assuming that the mean of sample 2 is going to be bigger than the mean of sample 1. So when we look at our alternative, remember, oftentimes it's easier to set up the alternative hypothesis first. Well, if we're taking mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2, that means the bigger one is the second one. Smaller number minus bigger number, that ought to come out negative, right? So if our original statement is, can we conclude the mile per hour is higher on the imported car, that means this better come out negative, right? This is the bigger average. This is a smaller average. So smaller minus bigger get negative. So check this out. The hypothesized difference is going to be 0. I'm going to have that number set up for both null and alternative. So I say equals, click on the 0, F4, and Control Enter. Now we're going to set this one up. Well, if this is coming out negative as compared to 0, I better type a space and the less than symbol. So there's our alternative. Once we know the alternative, that's what we hope to conclude after our test here. Then this is the opposite space. And I simply flip it around greater than. And the equal sign always goes with the null hypothesis. Now we can come down to step 2 alpha. Well, it was given at 0.05. Remember, that's the risk that we reject the null hypothesis, even though it was true. That would be a type 1 error. Now, step 3, let's 
sample, calculate, draw our picture, and calculate our test statistic. Well, we better get busy calculating sample one and sample two. So our sample size equals count, because we're counting numbers. Highlight all these, control enter, and copy it over. F2 to put in an mode, and sure enough, the relative cell reference is moved. So we have a sample size of 20 for each one. We're going to need for our degrees of freedom. We're definitely going to need n. We notice there's an n right there, right there, right there, and right there. But we're also going to need n minus 1. So I'm going to calculate those in separate cells equals n minus 1. Control Enter, and I can copy that over. If I put it in edit mode, we can see the relative cell reference moved. Now the average for each one of those equals average highlight, control enter. So 33.82 miles per gallon for the domestic. And when I copy this over, F2 to check it. Sure enough, the relative cell reference is looking at the right numbers. Looks like we got 36.52 miles per gallon. So the Averages from our samples are there. Now we need to calculate our sample standard deviation equals STDEV and it's dot S for sample. Highlight these. We actually, you know, we don't ever need to really calculate our standard deviation. We could have just calculated our variance, but standard deviation we've calculated so many times that we will go ahead and calculate. So 2.3 and 3.43. Once we have our standard deviation, we can go ahead and square it to get our sample variance. That's the number we'll use over and over in our formula. So I'm going to take standard deviation for the first and square it. Control Enter. So 5.44, that's the variance for the first sample, and 11.78. Remember, we did all of this in last video for confidence intervals and got all of the same numbers. Now, the key to all of this and setting it up one, two, very carefully is this right here. We're going to have to use variance from the first divided by sample size of the first, variance of the second, sample size of the second in a few different places. So I'm calculating it in one cell. And it will make our later formulas easier. So you ready? Equals, I take the variance of sample 1 divided by the n for sample 1. Notice that that calculation right there is right there and right there. Control Enter. Those are relative cell references, so I can copy it over. If I put it F2, sure enough, I've got variance of the second divided by sample size of the second. If I'm looking over here, that's that little bit and that little bit. By setting it up in individual cells, it'll make this formula much easier. Now we can come and continue step three, our standard error. Now remember, the test statistic whatever our point estimate is for the population difference. x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus our hypothesized 0. And then divide by number of standard deviations, our standard error. So let's go ahead and calculate standard error. No square root. And see the plus. Those two things are right next to each other, right there. Just as we did last video, we're going to do square root and then sum function and add them. So you ready? Down here for standard error equals square root and then the sum function. And because they're right next to each other, I simply highlight the range, close parentheses, close parentheses. And as we mentioned last video, it's nice. We see square root sum, square root sum. It's a nice, easy to read formula. Control Enter. And that is our standard error. Now we can calculate our test statistic. We take the point estimate. Notice. In last video, we calculated the point estimate in a separate cell. But here, we didn't do that, but no problem. I'm simply going to equal sign, open parentheses. Be sure and get the 1 and 2 in the right order. I'm going to take the smaller one minus the bigger one. So that ought to come out negative, minus my hypothesized difference. Now close parentheses, because we definitely want to force all that subtraction before dividing it by the standard error. So that little bit in the numerator divided by the standard error and Control Enter. Wow. So remember, standard error tells us how many standard deviations. So if we're looking at a picture here, there's our hypothesized difference of 0. That means minus 0.29 standard deviations below. 
We've done a lot with standard deviations in this class, and we know that about three standard deviations is a far way away from whatever that middle point is, and the probability of that is pretty small. So just from our general knowledge in this class so far, it seems like that's too far out to just assume that this is sampling error, right? But let's go ahead and finish this. Oh, we got to calculate degrees of freedom. That's this thing right here. Just as we did last video, notice we're adding these two bits, boop, boop, and then squaring. So I'm going to do sum of those and then square it. Then I'm going to divide. Again, I'm going to use sum because I'm adding these two things. I'm going to take that little bit, square it, and then divide by this n minus 1. So you're ready. Here it is, degrees of freedom. The numerator, the sum of these two bits right here. All we've done so far is that little thing inside there. Close parentheses, caret 2. Now we've added the caret 2. Now we divide it. And we want to add these two, so I'm going to use the sum function. Now, number one, number two, just as we did last video, I have two different calculations. So I'm going to take in number one, there is variance divided by n caret 2. So, so far, I got that little bit. Now I'm going to divide it by n minus 1, making sure I'm all doing it from the first sample. Right? So in number one, that whole little thing is that. Click at the end, comma. Now I'm going to do that little bit. There it is, variance divided by n caret 2. That's that little bit. I'm going to divide it now by n minus 1. So that whole bit right there is that bit. Now I simply close parentheses, control enter, and there are the degrees of freedom. Remember, we round down with our degrees of freedom to be more conservative. And lucky for us, we don't have to do it in the cell itself with the round function, because the t functions will do it automatically. Now, let's look at this picture. Here's 0. We already calculated 2.9. We actually have to calculate this. Now, this is the hurdle. So we calculate critical value. Now, this is t, and we're trying to get a value. So it's the t, not dis, that's for probability, but t dot inverse. That is for the actual number, our t. The probability, remember this is on the low end, so we take our whole 5%. These functions always go from negative infinity up to whatever point we want. Comma, and there's our degrees of freedom. It will truncate that, meaning it will take just the 33. Close parentheses. Control Enter, there's our hurdle. Anything past this line, minus 1.69. Anything past, we reject the null and accept the alternative. Anything that way, we'd fail to reject. Well, we already know we're going to reject it. It is way past. Now we can check this with p-value. Remember, p-value, if we're looking right here, it's the probability of getting minus 2.9, et cetera, or less. So it's t. We're using something t, and it's dot dist. The dist is what gives us the probability. Our x, that really means the t. So we're going to give it that, comma, our degrees of freedom. Remember, it'll truncate, comma, and cumulative. Remember, they always go from negative infinity up to whatever value we give it. That's the true. We've been putting a 1 this entire class for true. Control Enter, and there it is. Less than 1%, about 3 tenths of a percent. Very, very small probability that we could go out and get a sample test statistic like this. So our conclusion, the statistical evidence strongly suggests that the miles per gallon for the import compact car is greater than for the domestic compact cars. The test statistic was well beyond our critical value, and the p-value was much smaller than our alpha. And so we reject the null and accept the alternative. Now notice we did all of this with formulas, which is good when you're learning how all of this works. We did it manually, right? And not only that, but formulas are awesome if this data is changing. So if we change any of these numbers, all of these calculations automatically update. 
But if you're going to do this over and over, we got to look at the awesome automatic feature for comparing two samples when we don't know sigma. And remember from our PDF, this degrees of freedom formula assumes that the standard deviations from the population are not equal. So there's an automatic feature. Notice sample 1, sample 2. We simply go up to data, data analysis. And we've seen this many times in this class. Scroll down, and at the bottom, we saw z-test for two sample means uh, a couple videos ago. But now we're going to do t-test, two sample assuming unequal variances. Now we saw a formula in our PDFs that we're not going to use that assumes the equal variances. This is the one we're going to use, unequal variance. And actually, we'll come back in our next video and talk about paired samples. All right, so we have the right one. I click OK. And this similar dialog box that's popped up many times, it's going to ask us some questions. Variable range 1, I'm definitely highlighting the label at the top or the field name and our records. The next one, field name and our values or records. Hypothesize difference. Notice there's no collapse button, so we can't link it. We definitely have labels because we've included them there. That helps in the output because we'll know which numbers come from where. There's our alpha. We could change it. Output range. And when I click in here, this is collapsed because we have to tell it where to go. I'm going to click in like D42. And when I click OK, you are not going to believe it. It calculated the means, the variance, the number of observations. There's the degree of freedoms. And there's our t stat on the lower end. For a one tail, which is what we did, there's our p value. Notice this feature is nice. It gives you the one tail and the two tail down here. There's our critical value. We know it's on the low end, so we would slap a minus sign in front of that. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So in this video, we talked about comparing the difference between two population means when standard deviation from the population is not known. We saw this automatic two sample assuming unequal variance. And we also saw our formula method. Next video, we'll talk about matched samples or paired samples. All right, we'll see you next video.